Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this week's Enterprise Nation Online Masterclass. My name is Dan Martin. I'm Head of Content Enterprise Nation. Apologies for the light, uh, slight delay. We had a few technical problems, but, you know, it wouldn't be a webinar without them. Um, yeah, as I said, my name is Dan Martin, so I'm your new host for the um, Online Masterclasses every Tuesday at half past 12. Um, just before we kick off um, with this week's subject, uh, this webinar um, is part of our Go and Grow Online campaign, which is all about helping you small business owners build a better business on the web. It's sponsored by 123 Reg and VeriSign and Microsoft. To find out more about the webinars, the events, all of the amazing content we've got as part of this campaign, go to enterprisenation.com forward slash go and grow. And if you want to tweet, use the hashtag hash go and grow. But for this week, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Matt Fowl um, from Five Rivers, who's a regular Enterprise Nation, mainly at, at our Birmingham events who's here to talk about how to improve your website's user experience and how that can lead to more sales and more engagement. So Matt, welcome to this week's webinar. Thanks very much, Dan. Yes, uh, hi everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Matt from Five Rivers. I'm the uh, digital marketing lead um, here. Um, just a, a very brief overview. If you want to uh, see anything on my Twitter feed, then uh, you can follow me at Matthew underscore Fowl. Um, and I post uh, typically a lot of uh, marketing related um, uh, topics on there. Um, Okay, so very briefly, um, Five Rivers, if, if you're looking to get online and haven't already, uh, we build websites, we build mobile apps, um, we build software applications, and then after that, we then do the marketing, and we can also support uh, the website as well. Um, so we, it's the whole online range. Okay, so uh, moving swiftly into what it is that we're talking about. So this is all about the user experience and user journeys within the site. A lot of people seem to think that when they put a website live, um, then it's, it will be found and uh, it will encourage people to do what they want them to do. And actually, a lot of the time it doesn't. And there are uh, some really good ways of being able to help uh, guide people through the path of your website. So it all starts with content. Uh, because the content has to be engaging, it has to be informative, and it has to be able to really um, push home the product that you're trying to sell or service that you're trying to sell. So uh, it all starts actually with the keyword planner. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. There are other webinars that talk about uh, the keyword planner and how to find the right words to put on your website. So we're looking to be able to engage visitors. Uh, we're looking to be able to shepherd your web traffic through the site, through to whichever page it is that's important to you. So whether or not that be um, the contact page, if you've got a service-based business, or uh, the basket and the purchase uh, pages, if you're selling anything online. Uh, and by doing this, you're going to further monetize your website. Uh, and this is all about trying to get people to take those actions that you want them to take. So we'll identify them here in this webinar. So first of all, UX, uh, that's a really big buzzword in the marketing arena, and it's, uh, as you can see, it stands for user experience. Um, so it's basically setting people's expectations, and it's actually very logical uh, when you really sit down to think about it. So when you're on anyone's website, uh, let's suppose you're looking for um, some um, Calvin Klein shirts. Um, you want to know what size it is. Uh, you want to know if it's if they've got any in stock. Uh, you want to check the range of colours and the prices. So all the information, ideally, should be very easy to reach. Um, and a lot of the times, what you find on these websites is uh, tick boxes on the left-hand side that allow you to filter down, filter down, filter down until finally you've got the products that are available in the size that you're looking for, in the colour that you want, and the price that you're willing to pay. So that's what they want to find, and they want to find it quickly. Um, in addition to that, when you have a look at anything that you're purchasing online, you want to be able to see images that are good quality. So ideally, if you can afford to pay a photographer to be able to take pictures of your products or, or maybe you in action, um, you know, doing your, whatever it is you do in your service industry, that would be very, very useful. And again, if you're sending online, if you can uh, create additional pictures from either the side or the back, or you allow for the zoom feature, then it allows people to be able to re-identify that that is what they're looking for. Um, so the website being easy to navigate, then of course, a website is all about meeting their expectations. So if you say uh, you've got a sale on and it's for men's clothes, that should really take it to that section. I've been on even the big boys, you know, these, these, these big corporates, they, they don't get it right every time. Um, and quite often what you find is that you want to have a sale about a specific product or service and they lead you to a very generic page, which means you almost have to start again. That's called a bad user experience. 
And you don't want that because the quicker that you can guide people through the site to help, in, the, in, the, potentially they're looking to be able to buy something in that moment. So you really want to be able to get them at that point of sale. And so what you're doing here is to be able to provide that good user experience that encourages people to be able to take the action that you want them to take. So what are people looking for? Well, if you've got a product-based business, then relevant categories, of course, always help. I've come across a lot of startups recently. Um, the Startup 2017 event in, in uh, uh, Birmingham, London, and Bristol uh, two weeks ago, um, which was fantastic. If you weren't there, um, don't worry. There'll be another one next year for you to attend. It's, it was very, very useful to a lot of people. Um, and what I found was is that people have all of their products or services on one page. Now, when you're looking to identify from your web visitors which pages are most important to them, you're not going to know if you've got it all on one page. So if you take any, anything away from this webinar, one of those things is to, for me to say, separate out your products and services onto different pages, because then when you add your either Bing Analytics or Google, Google Analytics to uh, the code of your website, you will then be able to much better track which pages your clients are most interested in. And if it's the case that they're not really engaging with a particular page, then you can identify that and understand why. And maybe then at that point, you need to do something different on that page, change up the information, change the images, change the hierarchy of the information that you've got on there, create what's called a call to action, which means uh, getting some, uh, finding a reason for them to, uh, to speak to you or to make a purchase. Um, but that's, that will help identify it. So the relevant categories is really, really key for you to be able to understand your data. Uh, deep, detailed descriptions, a uh, slight typo I can see there. Um, detailed description of your products. Now the reason for that is because uh, Google will help better identify what it is on the page. So you can use your keywords in there. So uh, if it's the case that um, you're selling a particular type of TV or a particular type, kind of jewelry, to be able to give a really detailed description on that um, just helps, um, first of all, the buyer to understand exactly what it is they can expect. So again, just managing those expectations, um, but also for the website itself, it helps with Google ranks. The quality images we've touched on already, uh, multiple images per product. Again, I just want to repeat those um, points because they are very, very important in helping a decision-making process of your website visitor. And an intuitive navigation. And I'm going to come on to that a little bit later. So I'll leave that just for now. So that's what you need if you want an e-commerce business. Then that is what people are wanting from your website. If it's services, they want to know if, if you're local, will you come out to them? Uh, if you're a certain distance away, you might have heard some good things about them, but they might not reach your area. Um, obviously, a contact number needs to be prominent on every page. Um, at the top of the website, which is called the header, and at the bottom in the footer. You also need an uh, email address, um, online booking facility via a contact us form. If you're doing that with the forms, a mistake that a lot of people make is to ask too many questions, you know, uh, name, email address, phone number, what it is that you want to talk about, uh, and, and a whole host of other things. Keep it simple. All you really need is an email address, uh, a name, and uh, just the basics of what they want. So really, there's only three or four fields that you need uh, for that contact form. And again, it's just encouraging that, that positive user experience that people don't have to work too hard to get what they want. Um, so. If you factor all those in, uh, then in theory, what you're then encouraging is people to be able to know at any point, regardless as to which page they're on on the website, they've got your, all your contact information there um, and they know when, whenever it is that they're ready to, to, uh, to make contact with you. So in terms of user experience, here's a couple of examples of landing pages. Now, um, these, uh, this is a lettings agency uh, based in uh, the Midlands area predominantly. Um, now, I know you can't see too much there, but uh, that's kind of the point to an extent. On the left-hand side, you can see the Walsall branch. Now, this is meant to sell um, a service. Um, and so on the left, uh, what they've done is they created a Google AdWords account. And uh, they also, um, also through uh, Bing, uh, they created a two separate um, paid advertising. And they linked it to these pages. Now, the first one on the left there, all you can see really that stands out is uh, an amount of 1250 pounds something is free which is in capital letters and uh, you've got a phone number but 
even in those banners, they're generic banners that are across the site. And so really, if you've come from an advert that says uh, it, a full property management from 0%, if that's what it is that you want to sell, and it goes to this page, it's not really indicating clearly enough that, that, that the offer is there. And they didn't have a particularly good response because they didn't consider the hierarchy of the content and what actually was important to, um, to the website visitor. Now, when we came to do, we didn't do that particular one. We don't do the marketing for Warsaw, but we do for the Wolverhampton branch. But of course, you know, we look at these uh, other landing pages and we learn from experience. And what we made sure of is that on the Wolverhampton branch, you can see there straight away full management from 0%. And there's another banner saying, landlords, why use redstones? Well, that's a good question. You know, you've got to allow for that trust element to come through and your content has got to sing it. So um, in that sense, um, this campaign for Wolverhampton was much more uh, productive, uh, much, much better results. And uh, here are some of the stats from it. Um, so you can see there that uh, there are significantly more clicks through to the thank you page, which is the ultimate goal of a service-based website. Uh, when you're using contact form. The bounce rate, that's when somebody hits uh, your website or reaches your website for the first time, they have a look at the page and then they just leave it straight away. So they've either clicked the back button back to uh, the search results or they've just X'd out of that particular window. So that had a massive impact. So of course, Walsall then um, adopted the Wolverhampton stance and they saw um, a similar result. I'm going to come back to user experience, um, but let's just touch on the user journey. Now, this is um, this is a really key aspect of any website. If you're not defining a path or multiple paths through your website, then you're going to allow people to wander through it as and how they want to. Now, if you think about, and you've always got to think about both your desktop clients and your mobile clients, so you've got to be able to provide a good experience on both. Um, so you don't want to be alienating one over the other. So what you do is, uh, there's, there's certain ways to do this. So linking the key words that you want to be found for in Google to other pages within your website. And the official marketing term for that is hyperlinking. If then, uh, what you need to do is to provide logical steps. So um, I'm going to go to an example here. So here's one. Uh, this is um, a um, someone who attended Startup 2017. And uh, he wanted me to have a look uh, through his website, uh, and I've just here got the home page. So uh, there's not much really to see here. So we've got an image which isn't clickable. Um, you've obviously got the menu uh, structure as it is, that's fine. But then within the body of content, uh, it's a relatively small amount, and you've only got one link, and that goes straight to the contact page. Now, that doesn't give an option for that website visitor to be able to decide whether or not they want to do something else. They might not be ready to go to the contact page. They might want to have a look at a range of your services. But he hasn't put any um, hyperlinks within the body of the uh, content there that would go to other pages. So really, um, that's not going to help define that path. There's no path there at the moment, so I'm working with him on that. And so this is going back to uh, the lettings agency. They've got a franchise, and uh, so we worked on that for some time. And I'd just like to draw your attention to the... Uh, the red and the yellow buttons just towards the bottom left there of the page. The red button says what to expect and the right button says contact us. So really this is in terms of you know, what, what are you going to get from a franchise uh, with this particular company. So rather than then just having this particular page saying this is what you'll get and saying contact us now, we don't know and nor will you what stage of the buying process in, in their minds they're at at that any given time. So you need to try and tap into all stages of the buying process. And the way that you can do that is by uh, creating more buttons than just a contact. So here, we could have added another one here, but instead we've got, you know, so this is what you, you can potentially earn. So if somebody's interest is peaked, then they're gonna click on the what to expect button. That will then lead them to the page that sort of shows a lot of information. There's a lot more information that shows on this screenshot, but then they might still not be ready. Some might be, some might not be. Those who are ready, click on the yellow contact us button. And those who aren't ready, go to the FAQs. So then they're going to go to that page. So, and by doing this, this is what we call creating a path. Now you can either add those buttons in as they are, so that they're a little bit more visible. Uh, typically they'll be clicked on a lot more than any hyperlinks that you might add. But that's not to say that uh, there's nothing wrong with hyperlinks. Um, they, they, they do their job. And if you put your, those words in bold, 
hyperlinks generally have an underline under the, underneath them as well. Um, so people typically know that you can click on that and it will get you to the page that you're wanting to reach. Um, both of those um, are very effective methods. So what we're doing is from the home page um, or from any key pages, we're creating that path for them in order that they don't then have to go um, wandering around your website. And it, w what we're trying to do is to help them make a decision as to whether or not this is right for them or not. So for every page that you've got, think which page you want to start from, then where you're going to link to, and even from that page that you're linking to, you need to do the same again there. Now, all the time you're thinking of your end goal. Your end goal is obviously, oh, you know, please just pick up the phone or just make a purchase. Um, and this is what's going to help you do that. So uh, what we did, we, we had a company called ITS um, Solar Panels. They've got, they've got 59 pages on their website. Um, that was a good read. Um, as a marketer, you have to um, become an expert, if you like, um, in whatever it is that your clients do. And without doing that, you know, we can't do our jobs as marketers. So I read all 59 pages. I can pretty much tell you anything you might need to know about uh, solar panels as it stands. Um, so, but the website originally, it was around for a, for a very long time. It was, just, it was just there, it was a placeholder. It wasn't doing anything. They weren't doing anything from the social accounts particularly. Um, there weren't any user journeys whatsoever throughout the site. Uh, it was all completely random. And when you've got 59 pages, this is a real problem. So the quality of their content on the website was absolutely fantastic. It was a one-stop shop. You could make all the assumptions uh, you know, based on the information that you've read and you'd get uh, a very rounded view. Um, the thing was is that uh, without those user journeys, you're not going to encourage people um, to do what you need. So we did a full website review and uh, we changed the focus. They actually had door knockers, can you believe? Uh, used to knock on people's doors saying, hello, we've got solar panels and uh, it costs typically between um, three and, three and seven thousand pounds. Um, but you know, nobody's going to really buy that on the door. Um, so they need to have that uh, educational experience which only the website can provide. So they got rid of that and they went more online. So what we did was, um, and now you can see within the body of content there, there are three columns and each one of them talked about uh, the different aspects um, of what you might need uh, if you wanted solar panels. So that is to say, um, uh, can you afford it first of all? Uh, if you can, and so you, you want to link through to the finance page and then from the finance page, okay, yes, I can afford it. Now, is my house suitable? Is it, is it facing the right direction? Does it matter? Um, okay, let's have a look at that. Then from that page, you then link on to, uh, you know, what kind of inverter do I need? Uh, how many solar panels might I require? So you're just making sure you've got different pages for that information because it's keeping people on your website. Now, the longer you can keep people on your website, the better it is for Google to understand how relevant it is. So if you've got an average um, uh, website visitor time of say two minutes, Google will reward that in ranks uh, because you've defined a proper user journey, given a good user experience, and so you'll rise through those ranks slowly but surely. Um, so um, yeah, we did a lot of things for them. I'm just going to very briefly touch on this. Um, so we did a paid advertising through uh, Bing and Google, um, and we uh, we increased the web traffic by almost double uh, within a, a very short space of time, actually. Um, but part partly of that was it was due to the industry changes. So I think uh, you know, the feed-in tariff dropped considerably. Um, but these guys were where they needed to be in Google search results um, at the time that they needed to be there. Um, okay, uh, F1 integration. Uh, this is a website that was built by uh, the the, uh, the gentleman's father. Um, there, were, there are absolutely no links whatsoever. The images weren't clickable um, to another page. You couldn't increase the size of them. And this is meant to be audio visual installation company. And yet you couldn't see what was going on. There isn't a defined menu structure. It's basically just a placeholder. So. Um, what we did was we sort of stripped that back. Um, we had a, a discovery day with clients and uh, we built it back up. But we built it back up based on the uh, business priorities and aims. So if they want to focus more on the consultancy aspect, you need to put that uh, more predominantly. Um, you know, they, they might um, uh, deal with the corporate um, or the residential sectors or the retail sectors, but you need to get those in the right order in order that people understand more in terms of where your business priorities lie. Um, okay, so the user experience, just to recap, keywords and the hyperlinks um, are very important to put within the content. It helps Google better understand and it helps for that user journey. The menu, business priorities and organizing your information in the way that you think your customers would need to read it and making sure the images are optimized. 
Um, if none of you have seen an analytics platform, um, this is one of them. Um, Google and Bing are very similar. Um, and here you can identify what pages are working, um, which aren't. You can identify where your traffic came from. Uh, so whether or not it's your social accounts, whether or not it's been referred, whether or not people have found you organically in the natural uh, search results when they've typed in certain keywords. And without this, you won't know how your website's performing or what to do differently to make sure that you're winning more customers. This is absolutely fundamental to the growth of your business. If you haven't got it already, speak to your web uh, designer, ask him to put in the Google code or the Bing code. It only takes 10 minutes, shouldn't cost much at all, um, and then that can start tracking. And you use that via either your Microsoft login or your Google login. So data analysis, um, don't just look at the worldwide view, you know, just look at, uh, look at the, the geographical areas that are most relevant to you if, if it's the case that you just service, uh, say, within a certain radius. It can identify how the visitors found you, the most popular pages, um, and as we've said, change the information up or the calls to action on the pages that, uh, that maybe aren't performing as well. Um, and you can really understand what people do or want to do when they're on your site. And what you'll find is when you benchmark all these changes um, in terms of the statistics, um, then you'll, you'll better then understand exactly how your website's performing. And by doing these changes, you should be able to win your customers over. Keywords, user experience, user journey, and always, always listen to what your data is telling you. Those are the points to take away from today. You can contact me at any of these if you want any, any further information. Um, but uh, I think uh, this time, hopefully, just for a quick Q&A. Yes, Matt, fantastic. You covered so much in there. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you all found that useful. Loads of you listening. And we've had, uh, we've had some questions in, which is great. So I'm going to get over to the questions quickly. Um, someone has asked, uh, Matt, can you promote your company? Well, your, Matt's details are there, so um, someone is clearly impressed. Um, so if you're interested in Matt's services, please drop him a line at one of these various contact options. Um, uh, Jasper has asked, uh, interesting question, do people care whether I use a template or a, be a bespoke design for my website? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Hi, Jasper. Um, yeah, it, it, it really doesn't matter. The, the whole point um, of, of a web page is that it's engaging. Maybe it's got a good color scheme. Um, you've, you've got uh, reasons for them to purchase. In fact, we're, doing, we're creating a landing page at the moment for a service offices uh, business. And um, that is got, landing page has got to be very, very specific to the product or service that you're looking to sell. Um, and by making uh, a page very specific, um, you've got a much better chance of engagement. So if, if say, um, you know, you've got a page advertising campaign and you're linking it to a page on the website it might be that you know, you know don't use the page that's on the website create a brand new page that sits just in the in the footer of the website so it's not within the main navigation and use that but template or bespoke it doesn't matter it's all about the quality of the information and the placement of it fantastic um, another interesting question from Lorna um, hi Matt how many clicks should you aim for within your website before users reach the desired end goal, um, I guess you got to you want to get them there quickly. But is there sort of a an ideal? Okay. Solution? Well, well, I think that, um, yeah. One one small rule there is, is you should never be three more than three clicks away from from what it is that you're looking to find. Um, but it, it it's um, yeah the amount of clicks is very dependent on your service area or your niche. You know if it's solar panels and you know you're only just wanting to find out about them, uh, you know it's worth reading you know sort of six or seven pages if not more. Um, if it's maybe just something that you're selling online a product. Um, then, uh, then really you need to be able to find the category that, that product is going to sit in logically um, and um, you then need to be able to add one or two um, uh, to your basket in order that then you can go straight to the basket and, and make that purchase. Um, and the other key thing there is making the, 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 the buying element really simple. Um, you know, so try and make sure you've got a really good shopping basket. A lot of these are actually just plug-ins or add-ons, um, but just make sure whatever you choose, it's easy to, to add or take away um, a product um, and to continue shopping, and that will help the user experience and that flow through the site. Brilliant. Um, you mentioned plugins there, and we've had a question on that. Nicola has asked, how valuable is it to integrate third-party plugins such as Eventbrite is the example she uses? 
Yeah, hi Nicola. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly, um, we, so we created a, a website for Warsaw Business Week uh, last year and uh, we did exactly that. And if it's the case you've got a lot of events that you want to promote, then yes, absolutely. Um, alternatively, you know, you, um, if you didn't want to use a plugin for that, uh, you know, Facebook uh, pages are really great for, uh, you know, whether or not you're interested or going to an event. Uh, so, you know, they're equally useful. So whichever you think works best um, for you. Um, I know Eventbrite, uh, they can charge you if you're, uh, if you're charging for events. They'll they'll charge a percentage um, but yeah a lot of the time it, it, it can work but I think it's um, the plugin depends on the software that you've used um, to build your website so you'll need to make sure that it's not going to conflict with any other plugins that you've got so just just be aware that, it, that that's a possibility and to uh, to get some proper advice from your web designer brilliant um, Emma is asking um, about SEO help um, does Google Analytics and Bing Analytics, of course, have a tutorial? I am set up on the basics, but again, not really sure what I'm doing. How do we link social media, for instance? So have you got any tips for, um, other than obviously using your services, Matt, but um, other, are there any sort of uh, uh, toolkits and thick tutorials out there that you know that are particularly good for sort of SEO basics? Yeah, I mean, so so in terms of understanding uh, Google Analytics um, and even Google AdWords, actually, um, uh, Google uh, and Bing, um, I, I hasten to add, um, both of them have tu uh, uh, tutorials. Um, I've recently done a Google one, um, and it's all totally free of charge. You just use your existing Google login, um, and then you type in Google Analytics uh, training, for example, and it comes up with a training course, and uh, it takes quite a few hours to be able to go through it. Um, Google's, uh, uh, Google and Bing have now got um, a sort of test um, analytics so you don't really need to link it up you can just uh, get used to it before you do so although to be honest a lot of it is just playing around you know just um, and that's how I originally got into it I didn't do any tutorials as such um, but there's such a wealth of data that you can extract from it um, it's just a question of how deep do you really need to go um, but uh, the Google Analytics and the Bing Analytics training sessions are certainly there and they're very very thorough mm. I know I've spent many a time on analytics and you can get Hours can pass when you get get real deep into the data. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, it can get a bit geeky. Um, we've probably got time for one more question, and it's an interesting one, a bit deep. But uh, Daniel was asked, uh, "What is the dividing line between sensible use of keywords and spamming?" Which is an interesting one. Yeah, I mean, I mean, okay, so so um, so here there was an issue a few years ago of keyword stuffing. So you know, don't use the same word more than I know about three or four times. Um, but actually, there's no real hard and fast rule about that. But the point is, is that if you're going to repeat the same word, it's just going to alienate your website visitor. There's no point doing that. Google um, Google had uh, something come in um, was it a year last November called Rank Brain, and uh, it can easily identify what your subject matter is about if you've got you know the metadata behind it. Do look that up META data metadata um, and uh, so you don't need to keep repeating the words um, I mean if, if you've done it maybe three times then that would be absolutely fine um, and actually sometimes with WordPress sites especially if you've got the Yoast plugin that's Y-O-A-S-T uh, it will actually identify whether or not uh, you've you've got words that you know, added too many times or not enough um, so yeah it will sort of recommend it will provide those recommendations for you brilliant well, Matt, thank you so much. So much covered there. That was fantastic. Um, and everyone, thank you, uh, thank you so much as well for asking all your questions. As I mentioned at the start, this um, masterclass was part of our Go and Grow Online campaign brought to you by 123Reg, Microsoft, and VeriSign. Head to enterprisenation.com slash go and grow uh, for more events and more content on all sorts of subjects related to building a business on the web. A recording of uh, Matt's, uh, this webinar, this masterclass, will be uh, publicly available on the Enterprise Nation blog uh, later today or possibly tomorrow morning. And we're back next week uh, with another online masterclass where we're looking at how to run a successful crowdfunding campaign. Um, so once again, Matt, thank you for all your advice there. It was brilliant. And thank you, everyone, welcome. for joining us. No problem at all. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye.